Matthias Detling. Kulturoznawca i politolog. Swoją karierę dyplomatyczną rozpoczął od pracy w stałym przedstawicielstwie Szwajcarii przy ONZ. Następnie pełnił funkcję szefa Wydziału do Spraw Kultury i Edukacji Konsulatu Generalnego w Nowym Jorku. Obecnie zajmuje stanowisko wiceszefa i radcy w ambasadzie Szwajcarii w Warszawie. Matthias Tetling, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Um, I'm very happy that you accepted our invitation. Um, uh, let me start with, uh, I, I guess, very basic uh, uh, thing, which is mm, the way you are conducting uh, or facilitating uh, cultural and public diplomacy in Switzerland. Is there any specific model uh, you're following in Switzerland? Is there anything unique Uh, what uh, distinguishes uh, Switzerland from, from um, other European countries such as Germany, France or Great Britain? No, thank you uh, for this question. Also, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak here in this wonderful gallery. Um, it's a very interesting um, question. Um, and you're you know, mentioning, uh, for example, France or Germany also as, as examples. And I think um, Probably conceptually and in terms of the organizational setup, um, they're all quite different. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, when you look at the activities on the ground, so what the different representations, for example, of the Institut Français in Warsaw or of the Swiss Embassy in Warsaw, what they actually do on the ground, I think there's a lot of uh, similarities. You know, we all engage with local cultural organizations. We all collaborate on projects. We all attempt to you know, present our national culture and our artists to um, you know, the Polish audience. So I think um, there's a lot of similarities on the ground. Of course, uh, you have differences in terms of scope and size. Uh, you know, the Institut Francais or the Goethe Institute have a lot of resources at their disposal. So there may be campaigns, local campaigns that they launch, festivals that they organize themselves. Um, probably the proportion of um, sort of uh, uh, projects that they organize without any um, support of local partners is probably bigger than ours. We, mainly, we work mainly through local partners. So I think on the ground there's a lot of um, similarities. but. Probably conceptually and in terms of the organizational setup, there are a lot of differences. So, for example, um, when you look at the French model, right, I think um, probably you think immediately of, you know, that sort of being, um, you know, a, a top down approach, everything sort of comes from Paris. Um, but I think that's not what the French model of cultural diplomacy makes unique. I think what makes it unique is that it's about exporting a brand, which is French culture, which I think is less the case with Switzerland or, or Germany. You know, everyone wants to taste French gastronomy. Everyone wants to delve into, uh, you know, French literature. It's, it's known all over the world. Um, and I think you can kind of see that when you go on the website of the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, because a lot of emphasis is given to cultural diplomacy. Um, it, it's something that kind of stands in its own right. And um, when you go on this website, you see there's basically information about every cultural discipline, what is the approach, who are they working with, um, what is the strategy, in order to promote French culture in these areas. So it's, it's, it's about um, exporting a brand or where the brand already exists. It's to sort of continuously nurture this brand. Uh, so this is, this is how I kind of see conceptually uh, one difference or the specificity of the French model. I think the German model Um, I think it's not so much about exporting a brand of German culture. I think the concept revolves more around um, sort of uh, fostering exchange um, and mutual understanding and sort of uh, shaping a much more differentiated or nuanced view of 
or perception of German culture. Um, and then the Swiss model, I think it's conceptually, uh, again, a little bit different. So it's not so much a brand that we're trying to export um, uh, or that the Swiss government is trying to actively export abroad. Um, because we already do have a brand, right? And the brand is sort of Swissness, it is Swiss made. And rather than culture, Swiss made, I think, is more defined by products, high, you know, high quality products and services. You know, companies um, being highly innovative, that's kind of what you associate with, um, you know, with, with Swiss made. So it's sort of an economic soft power, not rather than a cultural one. Um, and also I think one of the specificities is that Switzerland's culture, because of its four languages, it's not like a monolithic block, it's extremely uh, diverse. So we see culture in our model um, and cultural diplomacy more as one aspect of our public diplomacy activities. Whereas I think in France, it stands a little bit more separate on its own, in its own right. Whereas I think in our activities, it's, it's a function of, um, you know, many other activities where we work with scientific institutions, where we work with, um, you know, uh, business organizations, where we work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's one angle among many to present Switzerland as a creative and innovative country and thereby contributing to this brand, which is, you know, Swissness and, or, or Swiss made. I think this is sort of conceptually a, a, a difference. And then, of course, there's, um, in terms of the organizational setup, there's also some significant uh, differences. Uh, you tell me if I should go into those. <laughs> You mentioned uh, some of the cultural institutes of, of, uh, of the other countries like France or Germany, yeah. such as uh, Goethe Institute or uh, Institut Français. Uh, do you have any counterparts, Swiss counterparts for, for, for those? I mean, um, what would be the, the uh, Cultural Institute of Switzerland? Is yeah, there anything yeah. like that? Uh, that's a very good question and I think it's very difficult to um, kind of draw that parallel because the organizational setup of how we promote, you know, culture abroad is, is so much different. I mean, in France, you really have almost a, a separate organization, but under the auspices of the Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is the Institut Français, which is countless, I think, I don't know, over 100 or over 150, I think, um, representations uh, abroad that have the responsibility for cultural diplomacy. Um, in Germany, uh, on the other hand, you have uh, Goethe Institute, which is um, basically a, a, a non-governmental uh, organization, but also with... Um, but with the governmental funding. With governmental funding, absolutely, but kind of operates independently of the ministry, the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, and um, which I believe is also um, uh, represented in, um, I don't know, like 150, uh, I think, countries as well. Um, so, and, and then of course, there's other non-governmental actors in Germany. Um, uh, you have, you know, different foundations. You have, um, you know, you have the Deutsche Akademie Schraustauschdienst, et cetera, that all kind of, it's a whole network of organizations that kind of, um, Pr promote or, or implement cultural diplomacy. Um, in Switzerland, um, you actually have um, uh, the Swiss embassies and consulates that implement cultural diplomacy. Um, we also have a very uh, wide network of representations all over the world. And um, I think to some extent, every um, embassy and every Swiss consulate has um, you know, some kind of mission to, um, to conduct cultural diplomacy. But then, of course, uh, there are other actors. Uh, and like uh, present Switzerland or Pro Helvetia, right? This, these are, are they supporting you in your activities in, in the field of culture? Uh, I mean, you as the cultural attaché here in Warsaw? Yeah. 
It's it's a little bit um, it's a little bit different. Um, so in the case of, um, for example, uh, Present Switzerland, I mean Present Switzerland is uh, an agency or is part of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs. It's part of our ministry, uh, and it is responsible for Switzerland's image abroad, and also uh, responsible for the implementation of our. Um, we have a government strategy for communications abroad. Um, so maybe, uh, I don't know if you know about it, but it was created um, in the early 2000s, I think in 2001. C can you elaborate a little bit on, on the reasons why it was created? Because sure. I, I know there was some little crisis. Can you Th that's right, that's right. It was in the 1990s when um, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland's relations uh, with many other countries was uh, seriously hampered. Uh, by the fact that Swiss uh, banks were um, keeping Jewish assets uh, that had been uh, deposited in these bank accounts uh, during World War II, but without the banks did not attempt to find um, uh, the descendants uh, who would then legally inherit these assets. So this hampered uh, Switzerland's uh, relationship um, quite seriously. And because, of, because the image of Switzerland suffered at the time, um, the need was felt to um, establish uh, an agency under the auspices of the Swiss government um, that would um, uh, proactively uh, promote the Swiss image abroad. And that's when in 2001 present Switzerland was uh, created. Um, it was then later integrated into the general secretariat of the Swiss Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, it was then also merged with the Cultural Foreign Policy Center, um, which was before that a separate unit in the um, Swiss Foreign Ministry. Um, and as I said, um, it, the sort of important basis of its work is our communication strategy. But in, those, in that communication strategy, culture is actually not one of the five communications priorities. The communications priorities are economy, innovation, Switzerland, Europe, Swiss financial center, and sustainability. So culture doesn't mean that we're not doing any culture anymore, but it means that the focus will shift more um, on, let's say, you know, the intersection of culture and sustainability, or the intersection of culture and innovation and technology. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so I understand that you are more focused on economic aspects of, of um, Swiss reality, but can you tell me, um, because I'm intrigued about this idea of House of Switzerland, which is uh, managed by Pres President Switzerland, which we just talked about, and then what is the difference and what are different goals of uh, President Switzerland and um, Pro Helvetia Foundation? How do, they, how do you cooperate all together? Is there any sort of um, coordination between all these yeah. entities? So um, when it comes to uh, President Switzerland, I mean, the cooperation is very straightforward. Uh, so what happens is that uh, there, you know, so we have uh, our communication strategy 2020-2023, uh, which has been adopted by the Swiss government, by the Federal Council. And um, based on that, we as a foreign representation, we adapt the strategy to the local context. Uh, so from among those five priorities... When, yes. when you say we, uh, you mean the representation here in Warsaw? The representation here okay. in Warsaw. So we adapt um, the communication strategy abroad for Switzerland um, to the local context. So we, um, you know, so can, can you tell us a little bit more about how did you adapt this uh, goals of the strategy to, to the Polish context? To the Polish context, yes. So we did um, an image analysis and we kind of looked at, um, you know, what are um, you know, what are the opportunities and risks um, in terms of um, communications here in Poland. And um, we looked at, um, you know, what kind of strengths we have here. 
So we actually decided to um, you know, focus on um, two of those five uh, priorities. Uh, one is sustainability and uh, the other one is, uh, is innovation. Uh, innovation because uh, we have a significant presence of Swiss companies here that are highly innovative. And of course, we're going to work together with these companies through um, the Swiss-Polish Chamber of Commerce. And um, sustainability because we are, I believe, a credible co uh, partner when it comes to um, uh, dealing with climate change, um, when it comes to um, uh, you know, environmental measures, when it comes to um, you know, sustainable development. Um, so we want to you know, be partners uh, with Poland uh, in this regard. Um, so these are uh, our communications priorities. Uh, so uh, the relationship with present Switzerland is basically that we can apply for funding for bigger projects with present Switzerland. So there is a budget for communications abroad. Uh, so that there are separate, separate budgets for, for the mission, diplomatic mission, I mean the embassy, and for the present Switzerland? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we have our own budget, obviously, uh, as the embassy, but uh, we can also separately apply for funding. Uh, it's usually bigger projects uh, from present Switzerland. And of course, um, it is then made sure that these projects are in line with our communications priorities that we set uh, for ourselves. So that's the cooperation with, um, and then of course there's a lot of um, cooperation when it comes to social media content. Um, so uh, present Switzerland, um, uh, you know, supports um, embassies and consulates, all the Swiss representations uh, with their social media content. Uh, we ourselves are active on uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And we draw a lot on the content that is provided uh, and prepared by present Switzerland. What about Pro Helvetia now? Pro Helvetia, yes. So um, Pro Helvetia uh, is uh, a not-for-profit uh, foundation. Um, it has its own independent foundation council. It also has like an expert committee that um, provides advice um, to the head office in Zurich. And the mission is to um, support and disseminate Swiss culture um, in Switzerland to some extent, but then also uh, abroad. And the basis of its mandate is derived from the Cultural Promotion Act, and funding is granted by, by Swiss Parliament. So it is actually, it is independent. It's an independent foundation. And um, I think, Unlike the Goethe Institute, its presence abroad is, 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 is limited. So it runs, for example, a cultural presence uh, in Paris, uh, the Centre Culturel Suisse. It also participates in some cultural programs uh, of some of Swiss institutions abroad, uh, notably in uh, Rome and Milan with the Istituto Svizzero. And then it also has some liaison offices especially in sort of emerging markets. Uh, so they have one in Cairo, in Johannesburg, New Delhi, Shanghai, Moscow, and then a sort of decentralized presence in uh, South America. And um, they also, yeah, serve as bridges between cultural practitioners from Switzerland and other global regions and contribute to a dialogue, you know, between cultures. But generally, when it comes to uh, you know, our cultural presence here in Poland, they don't have a physical presence, but they support a lot of projects of cultural institutions here in Poland with a Swiss um, involvement, usually a Swiss artist. Um, and our relationship is such that when we are notified of um, such a project that, is, that receives support from um, Proelvetia, then we typically um, uh, you know, contact that institution, or more often so, they contact us. And then um, we, we, of course, uh, you know, promote uh, the activity uh, on our social media. Sometimes we also uh, um, get involved in a, uh, in, in, in a sort of, um, you know, to complement the engagement of uh, Proelvetia. 
Um, so that's usually, uh, that's usually how it works. You mentioned uh, the priorities given by the strategy of communication strategy, uh, which is um, later adjusted to the local context. Mm -hmm. And then um, how do you employ culture to, to reach these priorities or goals um, given uh, by, by the strategy in advance? Mm -hmm. Or w how do you build your, your um, local strategy, I would say, involving culture and cultural events and uh, encounters? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see, um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, culture, I think, serves, um, you know, various different functions. I mean, one, of course, for us at the embassy, I mean, culture is a great means to bring people together. Um, I think it's probably uh, really one of the best tools to, um, you know, gather, um, you know, to, to, yeah, to gather people. Um, the second point, I think, is that culture is also an excellent tool, um, you know, to communicate, you know, about uh, the country. Um, I think if you know about, um, you know, an artist, uh, of a, about the artist of a country, uh, or if you know about, uh, you know, the cultural institutions of a country, it is really, uh, you know, a great way to... Um, you know, promote that country and, and um, sort of have a more, you know, for us, um, you know, Switzerland um, is typically associated with, um, you know, things like, you know, chocolates and uh, mountains and, and banks, etc. And I think um, if people learn more about the culture and the arts that the country has to offer, uh, it gives a much more differentiated view of Switzerland. I think it, it, it really, it's, it's actually an excellent tool to diversify the image of Switzerland. But can you give any uh, specific examples of, of mm -hmm. cultural events which you actually worked on? Sure, here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. So um, this year, for example, we are planning to uh, get involved in uh, three different film festivals uh, with a Swiss uh, presence. Um, in uh, not just only in Warsaw, but also outside of uh, Warsaw. Um, we, I mean, film festivals are always, uh, you know, very popular. And of course, uh, in Poland, uh, particularly because Poland has a great film industry, you have an excellent um, film school in Łódź. <laughs> um, and you also have, uh, you know, top-notch um, film festivals. Um, and uh, it is, of course, for us a great opportunity to uh, present uh, Swiss film productions, uh, both uh, documentaries and, you know, uh, feature films, also short films, um, at the festivals here in Poland. Uh, so, uh, so we have three festivals this year so far. Maybe there will be more um, that we will be uh, supporting. Um, then uh, we just recently had uh, an event um, in uh, the area of literature. Uh, so we had um, an institution that organized um, a trilogy, uh, it was online, that was uh, dedicated to um, Swiss author Robert Walser. Um, uh, because a lot of, uh, you know, some works of literature, of course, are translated into Polish. But really, um, of course, we've been a little bit, uh, you know, I only started uh, here at the embassy in Warsaw last summer. So we've been a little bit limited in terms of what we can do uh, due to the pandemic. Um, of course, a lot more would have been po possible, and I think also a lot more was planned. But uh, at the end of the day, had to be um, had to be cancelled. But um, so for this year, we're, um, you know, so far planning to be active in film uh, literature, I said. There's actually um, one um, book that is going to be uh, published with uh, excerpts of uh, different uh, contemporary writers from Switzerland, uh, Francophone and um, Italian uh, speaking. Uh, so that's, that's quite exciting. Uh, it'll be published, uh, I think, at the end of October. So we hope to launch it uh, or help launch it. Um, but um, last year, uh, also, we were involved in a couple of architecture projects. So we had a collaboration with um, the Polish uh, Association of Architects, uh, SARP, 
um, where we organized a, a screening of a documentary about Swiss architect Mario Botta. Um, and um, uh, after that, there was, uh, of course, a Q&A. And we also got involved, um, we had the patronage of, um, you know, every year SARP um, organizes a, um, uh, an award ceremony for the best student projects. And we actually last year sponsored uh, the first prize. Um, so a student uh, uh, received um, uh, the opportunity as basically the first prize. Um, he was given the opportunity to, to do an internship uh, at a renowned Swiss architecture firm uh, in Zurich. And this was also with the help of two Swiss companies. Together with us, we basically sponsored this prize. Um, so, of course, architecture, uh, given that uh, Switzerland uh, has, you know, world-class architects, uh, is, is, is always a, a field that um, works very well. Um, I would love to do something in the area of graphic design, because I know that Poland has a, also a strong tradition in this field, and so do we. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, in the area of music, uh, for example, we had um, one uh, Italian uh, blues guitarist uh, who participated last year in a festival uh, here in Warsaw. And that, of course, uh, always, you know, we always try to find an angle when we get involved in the project to tell a story also about Switzerland. And he, of course, um, uh, he, of course, uh, is Italian speaking from the canton of Ticino. And that was a great sort of hook uh, to also talk about uh, our national languages. Mm -hmm. Prior to Warsaw, um, I think you spent nearly 10 years in New York mm -hmm. as cultural attaché. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what are uh, the major differences uh, between working in New York, uh, multicultural, uh, where I guess it's quite difficult to um, to make your offer, cultural offer, interesting for the audience over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would be the major differences, right. uh, not just uh, in terms of size of the city, mm -hmm. of course? So it was four years as a uh, cultural attaché. Okay. And then five years I was uh, working at the United Nations. Um, but um, I, think I, I think more of, um, of course there were differences, but I think more of the similarities um, I think, you know, both uh, New York and Warsaw are, at the end of the day, very big cities. Of course, New York is even bigger, but Warsaw is, is also, it's, it's, uh, it's cosmopolitan, it's, 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 it's huge, and it has a, a cultural, an impressive cultural offering. Um, and I think, um, for us, uh, the key to success is, is working with good local partners. Uh, I think that applied to New York as much as it applies uh, to Warsaw. Um, so I think it's important that you also, you know, build a network uh, so that when, and that I think in New York is very important, so that when an institution in New York um, organizes a cultural event with, let's say, a Swiss artist, that they sort of think of the consulate. <laughs> here, I think it comes more naturally. I think when um, here a museum or a performing arts center, um, uh, um, you know, has a project uh, involving Swiss artists, I think they would sort of naturally approach us as the embassy. Uh, in New York, it's not necessarily so. I think there it is, um, you know, very important to, um, uh, you know, you know, get to know, um, you know, get to know uh, those cultural practitioners, and you know, let them know that um, th there is a consulate that can also provide support or that is also interested in getting involved. I mean, here it's important too, but I think um, here very often um, the Polish institutions, they, um, you know, they approach us, uh, you know, right away. And then we kind of, you know, discuss how we can get involved and how we can provide support that's an added value. 
Um, how, how do you? Uh, okay, so I, I guess it's a little bit easier here to uh, to to uh, to recognize the culture operators' environment, right, mm. uh, through the public institutions. Uh, but how do you find? Um, you know, cooperation with the public administration and public or, or national institutions of culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually we have um, uh, various cooperations also um, that we're planning actually for this year with the Royal Wajenki Museum, which is also part of um, the the national um, the national museum. Um, so we're planning, uh, you know, a couple of exhibitions uh, at Wajenki Park uh, this year. Um, we're also actually celebrating this year a uh, hundred years presence of the Swiss Embassy in Warsaw. Um, and it is in this framework that um, we approached um, the, Waje the Royal Wojenki Museum for um, you know, two exhibitions that we're uh, you know, hoping to realize. Uh, so yeah, the cooperation is, um, is excellent. Um, as I told you, uh, my, my uh, ambition is to uh, uh, organize a project or an exhibition in the area of graphic design. Uh, so I was in contact with um, the Poster Museum in Vilanov, uh, which is also part of um, uh, the, the National Museum. Um, so um, yeah, the cooperation is, is, is very good. I mean, we cooperate with both, um, you know, public institutions as well as, you know, private, um, uh, private institutions as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much uh, for your presence here, for Swiss presence in, in, in our project. And we look forward to all the culture events uh, happening in the near future, uh, so we can join them and enjoy the content. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel.